it's the next level. Hey, panelers. Welcome to the show. I'm Steve. And hi, I'm Laura. That's right. This evening, I am joined by the wonderful Laura. She is one of our Zed Head uh, companions and uh, does a little bit of podcasting. And so, uh, Laura and I are hopefully going to be able to be with you here for all of The Witcher uh, over the next few weeks. We'll cover uh, an episode a week. Uh, if we decide to, to accelerate that, we will let you know, listeners. But, Laura, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit and tell us a little bit about yourself and what you think of The Witcher? Hi, I'm Laura. Uh, I've been listening to podcasts for a long time and i've done a few but i am a bit of a podcast novice so so go easy on me gang um but i did watch the witcher last season i absolutely loved it um you know truth be told i never played the game or read the books although i did want to read the books this um before this first se- the second season kicked off but really just didn't have the time so so i'm only going by what's been on the tv show I'm the same way. I've I've never played the game, never read any of the books. I've kind of investigated them a little bit, but uh, uh, I like the show so much that I just enjoy uh, enjoy it and want to enjoy it for what it is. So, um, well, let's let's talk a little bit about season one and kind of where you remember where we left people off. I know um, we ended with the Battle of Sodden. Sadden is it Sodden? Sodden, whatever it is. Sodden had just finished, uh, and our our group. I'm going to say our group kind of. One, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, we have Yennefer and uh, she's missing. And that's where the first episode actually of the second season starts. And then we have uh, right Geralt and Siri meet for the very first time at the very end of that that season. Right. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. such a great ending. It really was. It really was. And, and it was got me got us all excited for season two. Mm-hmm. And uh so Yennefer basically blew the place up, dropped the mic, and disappeared. <laughs> we don't know where she is yet. Yes, yes. And we'll get to that when we get into the episode. And uh, the only other character that we, we don't really get uh, to know is we, we – I know in the previously on, uh, they showed where he, he sent Jaskier on his way and said, we'll probably never see each other again. <laughs> uh, and so I don't know if we'll see him this season or not. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm definitely hoping for some Yaskier. He is my favorite character. I have a bit of a crush on him. Ah, <laughs> uh, very cool. <laughs> That's good. Well, okay. Well, we can just get into it. Uh the the Witcher this is going to be a spoilerful podcast of at least the first episode of The Witcher season 2. Now, I know Laura, you have watched a little bit ahead. Yeah, I'll admit I'm up to episode 4, but Okay. That's fine. I, I will not spoilers. drop any spoilers. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll do our best, but definitely for episode one, if you have not watched episode one yet, you need to stop, go back and watch episode one of season two so that you know, uh, kind of where we're at and what we're talking about. We don't spoil anything, at least from that episode for you. And the title of that episode is a grain of truth. And the IMDB synopsis was Geralt sets off with Siri on a journey that leads him to an old friend after the battle of Sodden to shows no mercy in her search for, for information. I'm going to say for information. Yeah. So pretty quick and, and, and easy. What did you think of the first episode, Laura? I love this episode. It was such a great appetizer for the rest of the season. Um, it's what I call, you know, that one of those monster of the week episodes where it was a bit of a bottle episode, but we did get a lot of um, major points dropped that we're going to see develop throughout this season. And um, we, you know, we got that while still having this fully realized story in one episode and it was creepy. It was heartbreaking. A great start to season two, I think. Yeah, I, I agree. It took my second viewing really to to really love it. I was I, I'll admit the first viewing through us, I, I was kind of bored um, until that last that epic fight there at at the end, and then it caught me up. and And so when I went back and rewatched it, though, I picked up all these little things that I missed on that first watch that 
would have made it probably not as boring to me. Uh, but no, I, I liked it. I like what they're setting up for the rest of the season. Uh, I like that it appears anyway that we're going to get a straightforward storyline this season. We're not going to be flipping back and forth between time time frames like we did last season. Yeah, we'll see. They might pull a fast one on us, but that, that was a cool time switch that they had last season. Yeah, yeah, we might get some flashbacks with the the, the Witcher stuff, but uh, we'll see what we've got going on. So with that, we will go straight into our top five highlights or discussion points. And Laura, why don't you go ahead and kick us off? Okay, my number five point was um, I love that this was a Witcher retelling of the tr- classic Beauty and the Beast story. If people didn't get that, it's pretty obvious. He He looks a lot like... Disney's the beast and he's got these great powers. Um, things move around the, the castle on their own, similar to the animated characters of Beauty and the Beast. But um, Nivellen's powers, I, I just love how much fun he had with them. You know, he'd call up a meal and it would just drop on the onto the table. He'd call up a, a bath and it would just drop from nowhere. Um, and that was the play, uh, Nivellen was played by um, Christopher you? I probably said that wrong, but Tormund <laughs> Giants Bane from Game of, Game of Thrones, if, if people didn't oh, catch okay. that. Yeah, so it was really nice to see him again, and um, even behind all that CGI, you could see just so much emotion on his face and, and just the jubilance and, and actually the heartbreak at the end. He was, it was, he was great. It was a great uh, appearance by him. Yeah, this was one of my discussion points. Nivellen was one of mine as well. I, I love the introduction to him, and I really... I really like, I dug the character, man. I was like, this, this guy's really cool. He's fun. Like you said, he's, he's, he's conjuring up food. He's, he's cheating at the knife throwing, you know, he's, you know, he's, he, he knew obviously the first watch, I didn't know this, but he knew that he didn't give her the dress, but he plays right along with her saying, Oh, thank you for the dress. You know? Mm -hmm. Um, And I just love that we get to see these these kind of friends of of Geralt, but you could see in the second watch, I could see there was some suspicion growing on Geralt, and and we'll talk maybe a little bit more about that as as we go through. And you know, he talks about his curse, and he kind of plays it off, but then at the end, when we find out exactly what everything was, that it was, I had no, I mean, like I was totally blindsided by the fact that he had raped the priestess and. It was just a, uh, he was a horrible person, really. He allowed that whole town to get, uh, get killed just because he had his, this girlfriend, I guess, who was feeding off him mm-hmm. and just, uh, and, and like, I do get the heartbreaking part of it too, because he had to lose his love in order to break his curse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is, it was as, sad. You, as you talk about the beauty and the beast kind of thing, it's kind of a twist on the, the way their curse was broken as well, because, you know, they stayed together and, and got to be together. But uh, of course that didn't happen for him, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> That's why it's, it's the witcher retelling of the beauty and be- the beast, you know, it's not going to have the happy ending you expect. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so that was uh that was right there along with you. What's your next one? Um, my next point was uh, the creature design of Verena, the Bruxa. She was just amazing. She had this like insecticide kind of insectoid, I don't know, sort of um, creation to her. She's she's obviously supposed to be some sort of vampiric creature, you know, like traditional vampires. But, you know, she just moves with this crazy kind of twitchy motion that um, looks like a praying mantis. She climbs up the walls kind of like a spider. And it just really, it kind of reminded me of Jeff Goldblum from The Fly, you know, when he's mm. can, changing into the fly and he's got his little weird twitchy motions and everything. I love her giant eyes and the fact that she um, talks to Siri telepathically and is um, just climbs up on her and you think she's going to do something to Siri and she doesn't. She's, she's very sweet to her actually. Mm -hmm. She gives her the dress, but then, then you see her later and you see the real creature come out and she's got like these two rows of teeth. She turns into a bat. She's got these creepy motions where she can like, you know, contort and twist her body. That was just amazing. I loved it. Yes. Yeah. It was, it was really, really cool. Um, I I had this later. I'll talk about the fight later with her, but yeah, it was this character again. It's, it's one of those things that we get these different creatures that the witcher has. 
uh, are always fascinating to me, and I, I love to see them. Yeah, and a lot of them come from um, East, Eastern European mythology. Uh, the author, Andreas uh, Spalowski, I knew how to say this before, but now I forgot. Uh, Andreas Spalowski. I will fix that by next episode, but <laughs> he is Polish and, and a lot of the creatures in the show and the games are from Eastern European mythology. Very, very cool. Um, like I said, I'll talk about Verena a little bit later uh, as well when I get to some of my points. But uh, so my next one really is I love this idea of uh, Geralt and Siri traveling to what I'm going to call the Witcher HQ. The how did he say it? Care more. Mor Care Morgan. Car there you go. Uh, I'll let you have that one. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm excited to see that. And, and actually, not again, not spoiling anything. The next episode is titled Caramoran. So hopefully we'll get to see that. Uh, you know, last season, we only saw one other Witcher, right? And it was the one mm -hmm. that was killed, that yeah. he went and avenged. Um, and so it's, it's going to be cool to see that. I'm excited to see this kind of, we're going to get this kind of traveling again, just like last season, similar, but... It's his traveling companion is Siri now instead of Jaskier. So I'm yeah, excited it's got that whole. Uh, I, I kind of felt that kind of like um, the Hound and Arya kind of situation where you got this gruff, tough kind of loner of a guy, and he's got this girl in tow that he's got to take care of. So we'll see how re how that relationship develops. Yeah, yeah, I love the conversation he has w he has with with Roach about her, and so uh, uh, really, really cool. Uh, so, what's your next one? Uh, my number three is Tasea and her powers. Uh, you know, we get to see some more of the powers that she has. Um, she's walking the battlefield, and she can touch all of the dead soldiers and see their final memories. She's, she's going through trying to find Yennefer. Um, we also get to see her heal Triss, who's almost dying there. You know, she's she's having these seizures and she's they're about to lose her and Tasea brings her back from that. And, um, you know, most of all, we get to see her go totally medieval on the Black Knight by just sinking her fingers into his head and, and doing some sort of mental torture on him. That's who it was. I thought that that guy was the shapeshifter guy uh, from, from last season. So I was confused about who the prisoner was. So I'm so glad you recognize these characters uh, a little bit better than I do. Yeah, this was one of my points as well, just her using her powers. And that was so creepy the way, and I'm sure it was easy. You know, she just curled her fingers. They didn't have to do too much. But when she put her fingers inside the guy's head and his face kind of stretched out, yeah. uh, it was just, it was terrifying. But then, she, you know, she's cold, man, because she says, what, how did she put it? She said, uh, I'm going to leave you empty and broken or something, something yes. like that. And I'm going to take all these memories out of your head and you'll just be an empty shell. So yeah, Taisa is definitely uh, one to watch and having just come off watching wheel of time, all these women uh, kind of mages and, and, uh, and sorceresses and stuff is, is kind of cool to, to see and watch. Yeah. We thought she was kind of a, I don't know, kind of a rigid uh, instructor of all these, Sorceresses, but now we actually get to see that she she's got some sick powers. <laughs> she's not afraid to use them. Well, yeah, and and I think it's interesting too that she knows she realizes that she you know she got Jennifer Jennifer to to kind of tap into the chaos magic to to win the battle, mm -hmm. and she's kind of almost now she cares about Jennifer. She wants to find her and make sure she's, she's okay after this, this tremendous battle. So it's, it's an interesting side uh, to see of her that we didn't really see uh, last time. Yeah. Almost that, almost that uh, motherly side of her. Right. So that was your number three that kind of matched up with one of mine as well. So what's your number two? Uh, the story that Nivellyn tells Siri, it's, it's just a small part of the show, but I believe this must be dropping some serious foreshadowing for events that are to come in the series. And um, just a quick retelling of the story. It's called The Fall of the Elders, as he's spinning that, that candlelit um, carousel. And it says, the words are, Elven hero, human mage, ordained by hate to kill, instead found love and ran away against their people's will. Into bliss the two did wed, a baby on the way, a child born to parents dead that fateful winter's day. 
So I think that's giving us a little hint as to the history of the continent, but it's a it's kind of a um, kind of parallel series story as well. You know, she was this powerful baby born to two people from opposite worlds who weren't meant to be together, and um, her parents died before she could you know remember them. Yeah, and I love the the, the kind of gender role reversal that the, mm-hmm. the tale had that the elven the elven warrior was the female and the human mage was the male of the of the couple. I thought I I didn't really pay attention at the first time, but the second time I really uh, cued in on that. Thought that was kind of cool to see that kind of gender swapping of what we would normally think the warrior would be the man, you know, yeah. uh, and the woman would kind of be the more sorceress side. So I, I like that. I like the, the thing that kind of I was kind of interested to ask you about this is because maybe I'm misremembering, but Siri mentions the hedgehog man um, that Geralt told her about. Isn't that her father? Wasn't that yeah. the couple? Yeah. That's so, so, so Geralt told her the story of the hedgehog man and his, his wife or his, his uh, lover, but he didn't tell her that that was her parents. Yeah, I don't know so why I, he omitted that, but maybe he just thought she wouldn't really appreciate the fact that her father was a hedgehog. <laughs> I, that could be, and, and you know, she she finally opens up to him at the end that she has some sort of dark power. She doesn't really tell him what it is because she has that same kind of banshee scream as mm-hmm. what Verena had. So that's what v- Verena kind of saw in her. So uh, very cool. Thank you for retelling that story because that was lovely to hear. Um, my next one is Yennefer and Fringilla. Uh, this was an interesting interaction between the two of them as they're traveling and Yennefer kind of trying to pull her into going back to the North and Fringilla saying, well, it's not about, how does she put it? It's not about money. It's not about power. It's about liberation. Mm -hmm. And her kind of, she realized being sent to a kingdom that she didn't really want to be sent to, or didn't know anything about that. It's all about, uh, what's the word I'm searching for? They're, they're captives in a way. Mm-hmm. And so she, they're trying to free the South is trying to free the country from the hold of the mages. And it kind of both of them, you know, went against the rules, even though Yennefer was kind of given permission to use the chaos magic. Frangilla just tapped into the chaos magic on her own kind of thing. Um, I think it's interesting that, that Geralt keeps saying that Yennefer is dead and yeah, and I didn't know if he said dead, dead, or just gone. He, I, I thought that was very strange. Of, well, obviously, you know, in most shows, they don't, they don't reveal the whole truth because then there'd be no story. But right. um, Taseya tells him that, you know, he, she does, she never says that Jennifer's dead when he asks her. She just says that, you know, she's not there anymore. She, it, she was the reason they won the the war. But I'm like, yeah, but is she dead? Because yeah. And I There's think I think to say a minus option that yeah. she could have been taken prisoner. I I think to say I said that she was gone, mm-hmm. and I don't know how Geralt took that. Maybe Geralt took it as that she's dead, or maybe she's dead to him because of the whole breakup thing from yeah. last season. They showed us that where she, you know, it was he made that wish to the genie, and that's kind of she's thinking. Oh, the only reason we fell in love is because you made a wish. And he's like, no, this is real. And she break basically breaks up with him and says she never wants to see him again. And so maybe this is his way of kind of, um, you know, holding – that's his way of releasing it maybe. That if he just believes she's dead, he can, he can move on. That's what I'm searching for. He yeah. can move on from her. Yeah, that's a good uh... – that's a good theory. I, I think he does believe that she's dead. I think he's really hurt when he tells Siri and Siri asked who Yennefer is. And he said, it doesn't matter. She's gone now. So uh, he ne- he doesn't out and out say she's dead, but I have a feeling that by the look on his face that he thinks she's dead or he just wants, like you said, to believe that she's dead so that he could, you know, erase her from his life or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what is your number one? My number one was the reveal of Nivellin's true crimes and the reason for his curse. Um, so like you said, he finally admits that after, um, that he was cursed because he raped the priestess of the temple. And um, that is the only thing that breaks the spell because he said he's tried many times to kill himself. He's 
the title of the episode is a grain of truth because he keeps going back to these old fables and believes that there's there might be a grain of truth to them because uh, he's trying to find a cure for his curse. And then the only cure is the fact that he has to try and kill and watch his beloved die. And, and that's the only thing that turns him back into a human because he has to experience that pain that he, you know, um, imposed on another person. Yeah. Um, my number one got, kind of plays into that a little bit as well is that that going back to Verena, we talked about a little bit that she has she and Siri have similar power and she kind of recognizes that in Siri and she says that to her and almost putting a like trying to put a hint of division between Siri and Geralt saying that, well, you're a monster, too, and he's eventually going to kill you because he's a monster killer. Yeah, is, I, is I have a feeling it, that's that's the. The little hints that you get dropped here that that Siri is an other. She's she's not quite human. There's something different mm-hmm. about her. Yeah, and I totally missed him going back to the town and finding the the merchant's family there slaughtered, and then realizing that it can fly, and so he knew it was a Bruxa, and he, he comes back to Nevillin's uh, ne- uh house there, and he takes that potion. I love what they did with his eyes when he takes mm-hmm. that that potion. And Henry Cable is just like he was big last season, but he looks like he's bulked up even more. Maybe they're using some CGI to make him look even even bigger. I don't know. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, I might have to do a side by side comparison, but maybe it's his armor too. I think he's he's sporting a new armor this season. It could be that could be it too. And, and I had totally forgotten that he walks in on her feeding on. Uh, mm. Nevelyn, and that's yeah. kind of what kicks off the fight. Uh, and that fight, I think I timed it. It was like almost five minutes oh, yeah. of, of screen time. It was a that's a long fight for you know. Um, but yeah, and I love you. You already mentioned the way she kind of twisted and contorted her body, and the sound effects they they used with that. I loved those sort of insecticide noises that they had. Their little <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like like ooh. It... <laughs> Sounds kind of creep me out more than even visuals sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I didn't, I, I kind of didn't get the second, like, I understand she's proclaiming her love uh, for Nevelyn. Do you think she was going to try to kill him? Because she, as she's pulling herself toward him, she says, uh, if I can't have you, nobody has you or, or something, something mm-hmm. to that effect. She yeah. says, I think Do you she, think she would have tried to kill him. I mean, it's kind of that obsessive love that if you, if I can't have you, no one can. But also, I think he was perfectly willing to let her because I don't think he wants to live without her. Yeah. I, oh, totally. That's totally what we see at the end. And and I, I, I got also in the second viewing that he stabs her because she's threatening Siri mm-hmm. there. And that's why he stabbed her through. And then as she's dragging herself toward him, uh, Geralt cuts her head off and but she does declare her love right there like you said the whole Beauty and the Beast thing before she gets her head cut off I mean that was one honorable thing he did he did promise Geralt that Ciri would be safe and Mm -hmm. the only time he takes action to stop Verena is to protect Ciri right right very good very good point yeah and like you said that, that actor I didn't remember him from Game of Thrones but he really does portray that anguish that he feels upon her death. And he's sitting there with the ashes in his hand. He's asking Geralt to kill him. And Geralt's like, well, you're mortal now, so you can do it yourself. And so I, I don't know if we'll see that guy again. Uh, I don't think so either, but I would love to. I, I love that actor. He was Tormund Giant's fame. He was desperately in love with the big woman. That's right. That's the guy he was. Now I'm now I'm connecting it. The red hair because he had the red hair and the beard. And yes, he <laughs> was a big by guy. fire. <laughs> the giant woman. Um, uh, so we've got some notes here. Anything that we haven't already talked about? Um, one thing is that beginning scene where Taseya screams Yennefer, and then you hear Geralt say Yennefer right in the background. That is Mm -hmm. the exact scene that Siri has the dream of in the final episode of season one. Oh, Because if you go back and and it's not, I don't think it's the same shot, but the sound is the same. She, yeah, uh, Taseya screams for Yennefer and then you hear Geralt in the background screaming for Yennefer. And that was, that was that uh, premonition dream that Siri had. 
Yeah, and uh, part of that also at the beginning, the guy says four thousand of this of of their people, five thousand of this other kind uh, died. So basically, nine thousand dead on their side of things. But that the nerf, what is it? They're nerf Nilf guardians. Nerf guardians uh, or shit guardians. Uh, or, or shit. Jennifer calls it <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, they lost twenty thousand. Yeah. Of theirs, but even then, they're like, we don't know how many reserve troops they have coming up. So, uh, yeah, that was that was really really good. Um, did he eat something out of that dead carcass yeah. there at the beginning? <laughs> it, and I couldn't tell if it was a wolf or a deer. Yeah, um, I say it, I thought it was a deer of some sort okay. or some sort of deer like creature. But I think he does eat the meat of it, and uh, I don't know why he does. <laughs> Well, and I couldn't get because I, I realized on the on the second watch when he does that he he gets he hears the screams of the mm -hmm. merchant family and I don't know if that was meant to be that it was happening at the same time and he's hearing it live or that tasting that thing gave him the vision of what killed it killing something else I wasn't I don't remember him hearing the screams although I probably missed it but I just heard like um, sound of like wings or some sort of like bird-like creature flying and i think that's why he he got freaked out and he might have gotten something from from eating the meat too i'm, I'm sure he probably has uh you know expanded senses that way um so what else have we got that we haven't talked about oh he uses axia i didn't put that on there but uh the little hand maneuver he used to 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 calm roach Yes, I had that as one of my quotes. That was where she says magic like a druid. And he says, not really. <laughs> so, <laughs> very good. Uh, so we do have some quotes here. Uh, why don't you go ahead and start do do some of yours as I've already done mine. So I have a few just because I had to throw a Yennefer quote in there because she's so salty. I love her. <laughs> her uh, at least conjure me up some decent food to eat before we get to shit guard. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My last one I had, I already talked about the magic like a druid, and he says not really, is uh, when he's talking with, with Nevelyn, and he says, I've lived through a whole dark age and three supposed end of days. It's all horse shit. <laughs> yeah, Geralt's been around a long time, even though it doesn't seem mm -hmm. like it. Uh, I've got a few more fun ones here, and then some, some deeper ones. Um, Nevelyn says, I need to drain the snake and hit the silk. <laughs> fun way of saying goodnight. <laughs> And I'm done with this conversation, Geralt. Uh, Siri and Verena are having a conversation, and Siri says, monsters do bad things. And uh, Verena's answer is, humans do bad things to everyone. Oh, sorry, mm -hmm. Siri said, monsters do bad things to people. <laughs> humans right. do bad things to everyone. And right. um, Nivellyn says, monsters are more than just horrid looks and claws and teeth. Monsters are born of deeds done, unforgivable ones which we find out yes. is true in this episode. Yes, I think I think that's going to be a theme you think running through this season about the whether the monster is good or bad or what makes the monster good or bad or what makes the human good or bad is it innately what they are or is it the things they do. Mhm. Mm yeah, and I think we we saw that in last season and and in lots of uh monster films it, it's usually the humans who who are more of the monsters than the monsters themselves. Um, of course, you mentioned Geralt's line, you're mortal now, do it yourself, after uh, Nivellyn begs Geralt to kill him. Uh, and uh, this final one from Geralt, when he's talking to Ciri, fear is an illness. If you catch it and you leave it untreated, it can, can consume you. Yeah, that's interesting. And that whole discussion he had with Nivellyn about why witchers take children uh, was something we didn't really discuss too much. And so I wonder what's going to happen here. Cause I don't remember how old was Geralt when he was, he was a little, little kid, wasn't he? When he yeah. was taken and, and bred basically uh, trained to become a witcher from the flashbacks we saw. He looked uh, like about was, seven, eight, maybe nine. Yeah, younger, younger than what Siri looks now. Mm -hmm. Um, so that'll be and interesting the to one see thing how... I do know about the the Witcher mythology from from the books and the games is that Witchers are almost always exclusively male. In fact, okay. they are exclusively male. Oh, so that's so so that's going to be interesting to see when we get to uh, uh, 
the Witcher HQ that to to see if there are any females or if uh, uh, how that's going to work if they think he's trying to bring up Siri as a as a Witcher. Hmm. That will be interesting. Uh, I checked earlier. I did not see any any feedback. Um, any of our normal places. So. Um, don't have any any discussions there. Uh, in comic news, the only thing I really had uh, was that there a new trailer for Marvel's uh, Moon Knight on Disney uh, dropped. I was a huge Moon Knight fan uh, of the comics in the eighties, um, and uh, so I'm I'm excited to see what they do with the character from the trailer. I watched it a couple times. It looks like they're kind of changing it up from what I remember it was, but uh, but we'll see. Uh, I'm I'm excited for it though. What are you excited for coming out here in the next months or this year? Um, I, I want to see Moon Knight too. I've I've actually never read the comics of Moon Knight, and I and I am a comics lover. I just never read Moon Knight, but I am an Oscar Isaac fan, so I am uh, really excited to watch him in that. Um, other than that, I'm just really looking forward to possibly well going back and watching No Way Home again. I saw that in theaters yes. and haven't been able to get back again, but I want to. I'm the same way. I, I saw No Way Home in the theater and I have not had a chance to get back out and see it, but I definitely would, would love to try to catch it in the theater before it uh, it goes away here, but uh, we'll see. Other than that, it'll be streaming here pretty soon, I would think. Yeah, but will it be on Disney Plus because it's a Sony property? So. Mm. Oh, mm. I hadn't even thought about that because I know, I know how I'm going to get it. <laughs> uh, but, um, Peacemaker uh, looks like fun I've only seen Peacemaker. the first 10 minutes so I'm going to have to go back and watch uh, that when uh, my kid's not around yeah yes you definitely the kid can't be around for that one um, who I have watched I've watched I haven't watched this most recent episode that just dropped yesterday uh, but I've, I've watched the first the other three and they're really really good uh it's it's a different kind of show. It's it's a kind of like Invincible, kind of like um, the boys in a way. It's it's a, it's got some body humor and a lot of violence and blood. Uh, so, and I haven't been able to uh, talk about it with you yet, but I I really liked Suicide Squad, the Suicide Squad from James Gunn. I I'm assuming you enjoyed it. I did, I did, I liked it. I've I've watched it one. I want to say one and a half times. Um, no, I think I have watched it fully twice, fully all the way through twice now. So I, 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 I think I watched it in kind of preparation for Peacemaker coming up because I wanted to kind of remind myself of what that character was and, and what his deal was. And uh, so, yeah, so the, the Suicide Squad is uh, really, really good. I'm excited. I wonder if they're going to bring back any of those characters into we've got a couple of them already in in Peacemaker, the TV show. But I wonder if they're going to bring you those other heroes back. So I'm going to be uh, interested to see how that how that plays out for the rest of the season. Well, I'd be excited for it just because I know that James Gunn is writing and directing at least the first episode of Peacemaker. And I'm a big James Gunn fan, so I'm I'm willing to give it a shot because he does such great work with with anything he does. Yeah, very, very cool. All right. Well, with that, uh, we some kind of wrap up with some podcast recommendations. What have you um, got? I have been really enjoying watching or listening to Watched It in the 80s. Um, our mutual friend Damien runs that show over there. And uh, I am a child of the 80s. So they review lots of movies and TV shows from the 80s. Uh, it's a lot of fun and a lot of uh, good nostalgia. Very, very cool. I uh, I didn't put any in the doc, but I know just the, the normal ones. Uh, a couple of our, our good friends are, are covering different things. Strange Indeed, I think, is taking a little bit of a break uh, now that they finished up Dexter New Blood. Um, Yellow Jackets has just finished up. But gosh, House Podcasting is going strong with the Book of Boba Fett and Cobra Kai. I'm excited every week to hear those. So if you're interested in those shows, uh, check out house podcastica, uh, the book of Boba Fett and Cobra Kai. Yeah. I'm definitely excited to jump into Cobra Kai and, um, Boba Fett looks cool too. Yes. It's been really, really good. It's, it's a, uh, it's a fun ride. They're, they're kind of Disney, Disney, Disney fying it a little bit. Um, but, uh, but that's okay. We, we can all use a little Disney fying, Disney fying, I think, uh, in our lives. 
Um, well, as we always do, uh, if you would love to, we would love to hear from you. You can you're listening to us on whatever podcast player of choice you choose, whether it's Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or any of those other places. Uh, just find us there. If you can give us a review, we would love that. Uh, you can check out our website when it's up at panels to pixels podcast.com. Uh, our Facebook group is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. We are on Twitter as at panels to pixels. That's panels, the number two pixels. That's on Twitter. On uh, Instagram, we are panels to pixels podcast, just completely spelled out all letters there on Instagram. We have an email address, which is panels2pixels1 at gmail.com. We have a YouTube page, which is panels2pixels podcast. So check us out there. Also, if you want to hear any of the other shows that are on the Next Level Podcast Network, you can check those out at nextlevelradioonline.com. Coming up next, uh, you're going to hear me with Daphne. We're going to start covering Snowpiercer starting next week. You'll hear... Uh, she and I will be doing season three of that show. And hopefully, Lara, I hope you've had a good time here. It's a, kind of a short one this week. We had a, But now we're going to have a full week to digest the next episode and hopefully uh, get some good, uh, good discussion uh, for The Witcher season two, episode two. I week. am. I'm excited to All get right. back. Very, very cool. Um, but what else? What else? As we wrap up here, where can our listeners hear you? Well, I don't know when it's coming out, but I should be on one of the upcoming Adrenal Adrenaline Cinema podcasts with Mark, and we're going to be covering The Fifth Element. Oh, very cool. Multipath. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and, and me, you can hear my voice right here on Panels to Pixels, uh, but I send voicemails to various other uh, podcasts, and they sometimes play them uh, when they're coherent. Uh, <laughs> well, that's our show. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, I'm Steve. I'm Laura. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night. Good night.